home sellers have had an opportunity to be lazy over the last couple of years. I mean, you didn't have to get that sign in the yard. As I shared with you a story of a place I sold that the agent's husband was putting the sign in the yard, and before he was back to his truck, someone had already called and bought the property. And that's what the market has been like for sellers for the last few years. Uh, buyers have waived inspections. They've uh, gotten into bidding wars. All this uh, fever pitch, almost like a panic market, drove prices up an extraordinary amount of money, outstripping people's ability to afford homes. And dare I say, made sellers lazy. All the things historically I've talked about doing to a home to get it ready for sale, I haven't talked about any of that stuff in a few years now because it really didn't matter if there were things that needed repairing. Didn't matter if the roof was too old. Didn't matter if the paint was peeling. I mean, it, it just was like there was a house there, somebody was going to buy it, and they were going to pay you too much for it. That is over. Pretty much everywhere in America. And it's what's interesting about this is real estate, until about 15 years ago, 20 years ago, was extremely local. There wasn't a real estate market in the United States. There were basically thousands of little real estate markets across the United States. Today, the difference has only been the degree in the market. Certain places where things got crazy, crazy hot. Think of uh, real estate markets in Idaho, Utah, um, Austin, Texas, probably the poster child for too hot in the real estate market. And uh, I forgot Arizona obviously has had that as well. Arizona has a history that does vary some from the rest of the country where Arizona always is peak valley, peak valley, peak valley. So the question is, what happens to you if you're like, huh, wish I had gotten around to selling when buyers were in a frenzy. Frenzy's over. What do I do now? So what you do now is you go back to the old playbook. You need to be more careful how you price because we're going back to a cycle where if you do overprice up front, you ultimately have your home go stale in the market and you end up with a total net sale for less than if you'd price more realistically up front. Second, the curb appeal stuff matters again. Wow. So your house needs to look good from the street. Again, it can't look like a terrible fixer-upper if you're going to try to get as much money for your home as possible. So getting the landscaping, if you have a landscape property, getting that together, things that need repairing that you just, you live in a house, you kind of ignore them. You don't even notice them anymore. You got to take care of those things again. And know that you're not going to have 44 offers with personal notes written to you the first day with pictures of smiling children looking at you. So you'll pick me, pick me instead of those other 43 people. Done. That's over. So all we're doing is we're going back to normal. It's hard for buyers right now. Interest rates were abnormally artificially low for a number of years because of the manipulations of the financial markets by the Federal Reserve to try to stave off a disaster in our economy and other central banks around the world. And so the mortgage interest rates have been basically artificially held down since 2007. And now we're moving to a more normal market and so pricing has, as they say in the lingo of the trade, 
softened. We are not going to have any kind of collapse in pricing because we're still so housing short. But it means you're going to have to stand out from the crowd as a seller and be more realistic and be as flexible as you need to to get a deal done. 